When you decide to full-time RV, there's only about 100 million decisions <laughs> that you have to make. But one of the most important ones is what state you're going to choose to domicile and how you're going to get your mail. So this video goes into detail all about selecting the best domicile to suit your needs and it compares and contrasts a couple mail services. Now each one charges differently and there's some sneaky tricks, so we're going to go over all of that in this video. Enjoy the video guys. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. Long story short, we sold all of our possessions to RV full time with a toddler and a dog. And in today's video, Mercedes is going to talk all about domicile and mail forwarding services, the ones we've looked at and the one that we use. And because this little one has been really tough today, we're going to take her down to the park and Mercedes is going to try shooting this video all by herself. So she's all yours, guys. <laughs> Oh look, she's playing with her thumbs. <laughs> so the first thing I want to discuss is the difference between domicile and mailing address. Because let's be real, for most of my life, my domicile was my mailing address. But the two are not the same. A mailing address is essentially any place that you receive mail. The domicile is different. That's the state that you reside in. That's the state whose laws affect you. What I have been told, and again, I'm not a legal expert or CPA, is that let's say, for example, in the full-time RVing journey, um, someone passes in another state than their domicile, the laws that would be upheld would be that of the state that they domicile in, even though they pass away in another state. So that's a little morbid, but the point is that the state where you domicile is the state that you, for example, have your driver's license. Because obviously you can't RV full time without a driver's license. That's a huge deal, right? There's other considerations too with your domicile, such as health insurance, taxes, um, registering your vehicle, voting. That's a huge one, especially in our house because we need to vote so we can cancel each other out, right? <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> so now that you kind of have an idea of what domicile is, let's discuss what you should consider when deciding which state to use as your domicile. Now, I'm going to share with you the thought processes that we used, but our situation is unique to us. Just because the RV odd couple has their domicile in Florida doesn't mean that you should too. And so I'm holding you accountable for doing your own research, but I wanna share with you the things that made the decision for us. So the first thing that you wanna consider when you're deciding which state to domicile is the taxes. And this can take on many forms. There's obviously first and foremost the income taxes. And that's the reason why you'll see if you do research on this topic that most people will recommend South Dakota, Nevada, Florida, and Texas because those states do not have income taxes. But that's not necessarily true. Depending on how you receive income, you might be able to domicile in a different state and still not receive income taxes. There are many states that do not tax retirement income. That's a big deal because a lot of the demographic that is RVing is a retirement date. So if you have retirement income, you might wanna consider other states. I found a really good blog article that talks about states that don't tax retirement income. I'm gonna link that below. So you see all of those states in the turquoise green? According to this article, those are all states that do not tax social security income. So this is something worth looking into if you are of retirement age or maybe you have a different type of social security income. According to this article, Washington, South Dakota, Nevada, Wyoming, Alaska, Texas, and Florida do not have income tax. They do make their revenue in other ways. For example, Washington has high taxes on gasoline. But 
the point is do research. Things are constantly changing. States are competing with one another for, for you. The more, think about it, if a state can have a whole bunch of people domicile in their state and they don't have to worry about them, they get that representation. So states actually want you to domicile with them and they want your money. Let's, let's say it like it is, right? And according to this article, Tennessee will soon be the eighth income tax free state. That is expected to happen in the year 2021. So don't limit yourself to those four. You might want to consider some of the other states if you receive retirement income. But there's more than just income taxes to consider. Some states charge a lot in other ways. For example, vehicle registration can be really expensive or insurance, for example. One of the downfalls about getting our insurance in Florida is that Florida auto insurance is pretty high compared to other states. But I'll share with you why we decided to stay with Florida anyways later. Another way that the state gets income is through emissions testing. Some states want you to test your vehicle emissions every year. Other states will let you go a few years before testing. In certain states, it depends if you have a newer vehicle, they'll let you go longer without emissions testing. These are all really important things to consider when you're deciding which state to domicile in. Just because it, you don't have to pay income taxes doesn't mean you won't have to pay an arm and a leg in other fees. And this might sound obvious, but I think I need to say this. You might want to stay away from a state that's high in taxes. Like for example, California. The second thing you want to consider when deciding which state to domicile in is the cost of domiciling in that state. Let me give you an example. When we lived in Colorado and we moved to Florida and we registered our vehicles in Florida, we had to pay a really big registration fee up front. But every year when we renew our vehicles, it's relatively low. So having just paid that really big fee, we don't really want to go and do it all over again in another state. And this is something you might want to consider because you're going to be paying for more than just getting your driver's license photo. You're probably going to be paying for registering vehicles and so forth. And so keep that in mind that changing states can be costly and depending on your circumstances, you may already be domiciled in the perfect state for you. The third thing to consider when deciding which state to domicile is proximity. And I've got to be very frank. This is one of those things where you should do as we say, not as we do, right? Because we're all the way in California and all of our medical insurance, our doctors, everything is all the way in Florida. So if we had to get back there, we're not exactly close. Right? And this is one of the reasons why some people don't choose South Dakota because they don't plan on spending a lot of time there. So you have to decide what's right for you, but proximity might be an issue for you. And maybe it's not proximity to the state, maybe it's proximity to family if you have grandchildren. Or maybe it's the opposite, you wanna be away from family depending on your family. I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> but I thought we were keeping it real, right? So you have a lot of things to consider when you're considering proximity. Are you gonna be close by? Now medical insurance is a big one and I discussed how our doctors are kind of far away from us, but I'll tell you this in a general sense. I talked to our medical insurance provider and they basically told me that if it's an emergency, go to the ER. But if it's a medical situation that can wait, call them first and find out which doctors are in their network and we can save money that way. So if it's an emergency, just go to the ER. You only got one life. But if it's something that you can make a few phone calls before getting taken care of, you might wanna check with your insurance company if you're in a different state. Medical insurance is a whole ordeal that gets its own unique video. The fourth thing to consider when selecting which state to domicile is banking. Now, this might seem kind of obvious, but it's worth mentioning a couple of things. First and foremost, as much as I love supporting smaller credit unions and smaller banks, we're all over the country. We don't have that luxury. So we picked a bank that was national. But let's say you do have a smaller bank. Make sure that that bank is in the state that you domicile. And make sure that they have a reciprocal network with other banking institutions so that if you need to access your funds, 
you can do so. The final thing to consider when selecting a state to domicile is the mailing service. When we were looking at different mailing services, a lot of them didn't offer Florida. And that was important to us to have our mailing service in the same state that we were domiciled in. So that was one of the factors that helped us select the mailing service that we did. So you can see there's a lot of things to consider when selecting which state to domicile. And this is not a decision that you want to take lightly. In fact, I would say that this is just as important as selecting the right RV. Because if you're domiciled in the wrong state and you have to constantly be going back, your RVing isn't gonna be that much fun. So the first thing to consider is state taxes and state fees. The next thing to consider is the cost of moving your domicile status to another state. Third, you wanna consider your proximity to that state. Fourth, you wanna consider who you bank with. And fifth, you wanna make sure you can get a mail service provider from the same state that you're gonna to choose to domicile in. Now, let's talk about those mail service providers because they are not running a non-for-profit. They are in fact running a business and they each have their different pros and cons. I'm gonna give you a general view of three companies and tell you what I believe their pros and cons are. These are companies that we actually considered using and I'll tell you who we ended up choosing and why. But again, we like to call balls and strikes. So we're gonna give you the good about the company that we chose and we're gonna tell you the things that we don't like so much. So you might be asking yourself, why do I need a mail service provider? Well, if you have your mail forwarded to a friend or a family member, it's gonna get really old fast. Think about it. I mean, if you have someone that's available to do that, that's great, but you don't want to abuse their kindness. And depending on your mail situation, it, they might be getting a lot of your mail. In fact, many RV parks will not accept mail, they'll accept packages because they don't wanna be your personal assistant. And that's one of the reasons that they do charge when they receive a package on your behalf. They want to discourage the practice of using them as a mailbox. Before we go into the specific companies, I want to give you an illustration though of how much it can really cost you to get your mail. Now, a couple of things about RV parks, and this has just been my experience, everyone's different. Some don't charge to receive a package on your behalf. Others will charge you a small fee to do so, like a dollar, two dollars. I've even seen one as high as five dollars, but that's just been once. Generally, they charge about $2 per package. Now, you need to consider that if you buy something on Amazon and you pay for shipping, or let's say you have Prime, which is essentially paying for shipping up front, and then it gets mailed to the mail service provider, and then they mail it to the park, you could be paying multiple shipping costs. You have to be very strategic when you get things shipped. Now, there's a couple ways that these mail service providers make money. Some of them charge a yearly fee, others charge a monthly fee. Sometimes they charge you for scans. And now everyone does it differently, but basically most of them will scan the envelope, right? So you can see what it is that you had received. But if you want them to open it for you and tell you what's inside the envelope, they'll charge you sometimes as much as 25 cents or 50 cents per scan. Now think about this, a two page bank statement might have some writing on the back, that's considered a separate page. So what I would call a two page bank statement could actually be four scans. And at 50 cents a scan, that can add up rather quickly. So be wary of that. So the first company I'm gonna talk about is Escapees. And they are awesome because they don't just do mail forwarding, they do all sorts of outreach and even lobbying for our VRs. And they have really cool get togethers that we haven't personally been to, but we do wanna add that to our list. So we're gonna link below, you should definitely check them out. But they specifically have a mail service and this is how they work. So they have three options and you can choose from three annual fees. One is an annual fee of $95, no scans. The other is an annual fee of $115 and that does include scans. But to get scans, you have to pay a $10 monthly fee and 50 cents per scan. And remember, each side is kind of a scan so that can get pricey. The third option is $135 a year, $10 a month to get scans and 50 cents per scanned page. So that's pretty competitive, right? 
The reason we decided not to use them was because I remember applying for medical insurance and they send you like these huge packages of paperwork and half of it is just the same disclosure that they mail with each letter and they send the disclosures in different languages and stuff so it's a lot of paperwork and I didn't want to be paying 50 cents per scan of disclosure basically. So I was looking for something that was a little bit more competitive when it comes to the scans. So we selected Traveling Mailbox. I love their service. They have three programs. The first program is $15 a month. The second is $25 a month. And the third is $55 a month. And as their prices increase, so does what you get, right? So the $15 a month program includes 40 envelopes and then they will charge you for envelopes but keep in mind they filter the junk mail so they're not including junk mail in those 40 envelopes it includes 35 pages of scans and you can have up to three recipients so john could be a recipient i could be a recipient and sage could be a recipient the second program that i mentioned and this is the one that we use is 25 dollars a month this includes 100 envelopes, and we have never come anywhere near that amount. Even the first month when we moved and we had all the bank letters saying, hey, we got your new address, which that was a lot of mail. That's probably the worst month to receive mail, the first month that you do all the address changes. But we were nowhere near the 100. It includes 80 scans, and these scans roll over. So if you use 70 scans one month, you have 10 scans that roll over to the next month, thereby you can use 90 scans the next month, which I really like that rollover piece. And this one includes five recipients. So we chose that one so we could receive business mail as well. The final one at $55 a month is like the big kahuna one. And that one includes 200 envelopes, which I would love to say that our business is so um, profitable that we're receiving 200 envelopes, but we're not there yet. It includes 180 scans and you can have up to 10 recipients. So that one's really good if you have a lot of businesses. But again, calling the balls and the strikes, here's the one thing I don't like. There's a forwarding fee of $2 when they when you collect all the mail, you can tell them to forward it to you once a month or once a quarter, whatever you like, you can have them forward it to you, right? But there's a fee to forward and if you get a package, that fee is $5 to receive the package, and then they charge you whatever the FedEx fee is. So I do not recommend them for packages. As far as packages go, be strategic and have those sent to you. My understanding is that you can get packages for free if they are mailed general delivery to the US Post Office. It does take a little bit of work because you have to call the individual post office and make sure they accept general delivery, but that's a really good option if you don't wanna be paying to receive packages. So I love Traveling Mailbox, I love the scans. We link below to them, they're awesome. Just be careful with the packages. And if you do go over your scans or your envelopes, it's 25 cents an envelope, I think, and 50 cents a pa uh, scan. I'll double check and I'll put that in the note. The final one that we looked into is called America's Mailbox, and that's one that we found through rvtravel.com, which is kind of funny because we actually found America's Mailbox before we found RV Travel, and I wish we could have found RV Travel first. I wish we could have found RV Travel, the newsletter, before we bought our RV, because basically it's a free newsletter that gives you industry RV news, and so we're gonna link to that because it's free and it's informative. And whether you're a newbie or an RV veteran, I think it's something you should have in your back pocket. But America's Mailbox works with RV Travel. And they have some really competitive options, but you'll understand quickly why we did, weren't able to go with them. So they have a platinum package that at the moment is $229.99 a year. And there's a one-time $25 startup fee. Again, the gold, silver, and bronze also have the one-time $25 setup fee. The gold is $189.99, the silver is $169.99, and the bronze is $149.99. And again, these are yearly rates. Now what's really good about this company is they will help you like with vehicle registrations and stuff like that. If you have the platinum and gold, I'm not sure if they do that for silver, and I know that with bronze, bronze is the bare minimum. 
Bronze is essentially a domicile fee, and they will accept up to seven pieces of mail for you. So this is bare minimum. This is not mail management. This is just having an address, basically. The silver, they will forward all received mail, whereas the platinum and gold, they actually filter through, help with the junk and so forth. The only downfall about this company is that they only work in South Dakota. If we could have used them with our domicile in Florida, this would have been an option to consider more in depth. Not all mailing services work in all states. So to recap, Escapees is great if you do not have a lot of scans. Traveling Mailbox is great if you do have a lot of scans, but don't use them for packages. And America's Mailbox is fantastic if you are gonna domicile in South Dakota. Now, if you're an RV veteran, let us know which state you're domiciling in and let us know some of the reasons why you selected that state. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe so you can get the videos from the RV Odd Couple and join our crazy RV Odd Squad. And let us know in the comments what other videos you want. All right, I gotta be very, very real with you guys. I am so delighted that John just took Sage to go exploring while I do this recording. I am seriously tempted to tell him I need more time than I actually do, because <laughs> this is awesome.